Good to have you with us on the programme. Just on that, um, what difference do you think that inflation print yesterday makes to your markets? I think now we're so close to the end of the year, so the primary markets are going to be quiet anyway uh, until you know, early January when, when they restart. So I don't think it'll have a, a large short-term effect. But I think it bolsters investors' case that we're uh, you know, starting to approach peak rates. And while there's recession worries on the horizon, at least uh, you know, for the first quarter of 2023, there appears to be some stability that makes it easier to price risk. Can I ask you, um, we've been talking a lot around uh, the desk about uh, what's hidden in private markets at the moment and to what degree there will be a desire to come back and borrow to support, uh, shall we say, mispricings or misallocations. What's your read, Henrik? Do we need to be nervous that we're going to have an iceberg titanic moment in the early part of next year around the private equity industry? It's a, it's a very good question, actually. And, and I would say it's not so much or it's not just about private equity. It's also about um, uh, private lending of, of various kinds. And uh, you know, you're right. The, the public markets now have adjusted to the new economic conditions. And I think spreads uh, in, in many cases have, have peaked and you can price default risk. That's definitely not the case in private markets. Uh, valuations there are definitely lagging. But I, I wouldn't sort of worry in the timescale that you mentioned if I was a, an investor. I don't think there's much systemic effects of potential misvaluations in, in private markets because you know, these aren't uh, institutions that, that would necessarily affect yeah, the global economy like a bank does. So what's happened is there's been a migration of credit and equity ownerships from public markets to private markets. And you know, if there's misvaluations there, it's really between those institutions and their LPs ultimately. I don't know. Uh, good morning to you, my friend. I, I don't know. I think there are many problems that you and Jeff have just talked about. The lagging valuations, I think, sits in the middle of a problem for private equity in raising money now because the cost of finance has gone up and actually selling asset back onto the equity markets, which has always been so bountiful for them. Bountiful, and yet they, they can't sell them at the price they want to now as well. You, you're really saying, and I, I want you to emphasize the point if that's what you believe, that the, the problems that potentially could come in that lagging you just mentioned of valuations in the private equity space and the private capital markets, you don't think that's going to have a, a, an effect on public markets? Um, well, it, it, it depends on what you mean by problems. So, uh, yeah, I think you're 100% you're right that uh, the private markets have not adjusted anywhere near to public markets, and that is going to take some time. And you're also right that investments that were made or money that was lent over the last 18 months at peak market valuations is probably not in the money right now relative to the public markets. Now, having said that, um, you know, that doesn't mean that, for example, private equity companies won't want to exit their investments ultimately. You know, they'll need to do that to demonstrate some capital return to their LPs, to their clients. And so you know, it, it's really a question of what return they manage to generate on the investments that they've made. But I don't think many of them are in a particular rush. It's clearly not a, a fantastic fundraising environment for them right now. But most large private equity firms have raised significant amounts of capital and they can afford to be patient. And if there is a problem, it's really only going to become apparent, you know, late 23, I would say, or early 24, when you have the big maturity wall hitting the private equity portfolio company.